Well, indeed, modern applications have changed. They've grown from being very small websites, from simple applications designed to do one thing, to very large and complex web properties. And today, they consist of multiple parts. You create those uh, small services, you connect them together. Now, with the new changes in the infrastructure, you're also able to scale them up and down easily. You create those new containers, those uh, new machines in the cloud, and um, connectivity to the application and connectivity between its parts is extremely important. With Nginx, uh, you already know how to connect to your application. You know how um, the application works, uh, how the connectivity works uh, uh, to that. But with the unit project, we went further deeper down to the application code. It provides you the platform for running the application and running the application code. We looked at the existing solutions today. We found that they lack uh, some fundamental technologies. Many of those are big, slow uh, things that are not designed for cloud-native applications. Nginx unit is built from scratch. It's built um, using the core principles of Nginx uh, engineering and by the core engineering team. Unit is an essential part of Nginx application platform. It fits uh, the same way for uh, the monolithic applications and uh, for the microservices apps. It provides you the way to migrate and uh, separate uh, services out of the old school applications. It gives you a way to connect in a uniform way to the applications that you are building today and will be building tomorrow. Let's talk a bit about functionality that um, uh, Nginx unit gives you. First of all, it's a fully dynamic application server designed for cloud native apps. What does dynamic mean? With Nginx, you know that um, well-known command for reloading it. You probably reload it um, on a frequent basis already. And when the reload is done right, you're not losing connections. You're, uh, you're fine. The application is working. You can continue making changes by reloading the whole server. However, reloads are sometimes taxing on the server resources. And many of our uh, big um, users and customers uh, cannot really reload as frequently as they want to. Uh, with Unit, the system doesn't reload the processes. Uh, it only changes that part of um, uh, its uh, memory and that part of, uh, uh, of the processes that's required for a particular change. What it, what it gives to you is the ability to make changes as frequently as you like. Now, the next thing is how it's configured. It's configured through a simple API. And uh, today, everybody likes uh, to do the API calls for configuration of the servers. Um, every management system uh, understands that, and uh, we built a very easy to understand um, uh, API that is based on uh, industry standard JSON. <clears throat> and uh, what's very important is that this API is available remotely. What were you doing when you, when you weren't able to configure a server in a remote way? You are building a small agent, a sidecar of sorts, in order to perform those configuration uh, steps. With Unit, you can expose the API to your uh, private networks and to your remote agents to have that configuration done in a very easy, native, and remote fashion. Next, Unit is polyglot. It understands multiple languages. Today, we support PHP, Python, and Go. Other languages are coming soon. And what that gives to you is the ability to run any of, those, uh, any of that code, any of, on a, written on any of those languages, at the same time on the same server. But what's even more interesting is that you can run multiple versions of the same language 
on the same server as well. Have you ever migrated an old PHP application from PHP 5 to PHP 7? Now it's as easy as an one API call. Have you ever tried running the same applications in Python 2.7 and Python 3.3? I, I see some people laughing in the audience. Yeah, sometimes that doesn't even work. <laughs> yes, uh, now we're giving you the same platform for running the application in the language and in the version of the language that this application understands. And um, um, what's, uh, what's interesting is how that is made possible. I will ask um, Igor Sosoyev, uh, the author, the original author of Nginx, to the stage to talk about the architecture of uh, Nginx unit. Well, Igor has one amazing quality. Uh, Eager builds the applications in the fundamental way. He looks at the problem at the deeper level, and he doesn't take any preconceptions or compromising when he's uh, looking at how that application can be built. And um, uh, Eager, please come up on stage and let's talk a bit about uh, the architecture of Nginx unit. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Bye. Good morning, my name is Igor Sosoyev. I am the original author of Nginx, co-founder of the Nginx company and architect of our new project unit. Here is architectural scheme of the unit. All parts of this, in this scheme are separate processes in one system. The processes are separated for uh, security reasons. Only the main process can run as root. Other can be run as non-privileged users. The scheme, the architecture is quite complex, so I will elaborate the most important part. The key feature of the unit is dynamic configurations. As to performance is not, is, is comparable to uh, existing uh, existing application servers. What does dynamic configurations mean? It means that there is no particular configuration file at all. You interact with controller process with RESTful JSON API. You can uh, over Unix domain sockets or, you can, or TCP sockets. You can upload the whole configurations at once or just its part. part. You can change or delete any part of the configurations. And unit will not reload entirely on these changes. Only appropriate parts will be reloaded. Uh, this means that uh, you can change your configurations as frequently as you want. When controller process accept configurations request, it validates it and send appropriate parts to the uh, router and main processes. The router processes has several worker threads that interacts with clients. They accept the client's requests, pass them to the applic to application processes, get responses back from the applications, and send the responses back to the clients. When router accept new configurations from controller process, the worker threads start to handle new incoming connections with these new configurations, while old connections are conti continue to be processed by uh, threads, by the threads according to the previous configurations. That is, router worker threads can work simultaneously with several generations of configurations without, without reloading. When router received a request for applications that, that has not been started yet, it asks main process to start the application. Currently, application started only on demand, and later we will add preferred cap uh, capabilities. When main process needs to start the application, it forks 
a new process. Uh, load, uh, dynamic loads, uh, a required, the required application model, and uh, set appropriate credentials for the new process, and then load and, and eventually start to run applications code in the new process. Uh, the module system allows you to run different type of applications in one system and even different versions of PHP or Python in one uh, server. Uh, Goal applications are different animals. Uh, typically, uh, a, a typical uh, Go applications listen on HTTP server, uh, HTTP port by itself. And when you build your application, you have to build everything in, the, in these applications, including networking and all management features. With Unit, you can control over your applications without this additional code. In the case of PHP or Python applications, you have not to change your code at all. Uh, you can run it as is. Uh, otherwise, uh, however, in uh, Go applications, you have to make a tiny ch change. You have to import unit package, and you have change HTTP package call to unit. However, unit package is compatible with standard Go uh, uh, HTTP package, and when you run your, ser your server standalone, it will work, it will listen on HTTP port. If you <clears throat> and handle uh, usual, uh, uh, HTTP requests as usual. Uh, when Go application run by unit, it will communicate with the router process. Uh, router process will handle all HTTP requests and internally communicate with the applications via socket pairs, socket pairs and shared segment memory. Each segment memory and socket pair are private for, for the process. So when application process exists abnormally, uh, the router process uh, will handle this failure gracefully, and no other processes and communications will be affected. And now uh, Nick will tell you more about unit API configurations and our future roadmap. Thank you, Igor. All right, did I tell you that API of Nginx unit is easy? Well, yes it is. It's uh, right here, you can see the very simple example of uh, unit API. And uh, I want to talk a little bit about how it's uh, configured and how to make changes to the environment using this API. First object that you can define is the application object. You can give it a nice uh, user-friendly name, define a type of that application as the language and that language version. Then you can define other parameters uh, for the application which are uh, related to the type of the application. PHP applications have uh, some uh, specific parameters. Go applications will have some other parameters. Now you can uh, also define that application with a different uh, username and group name in the Unix system, so they would be separated for the security reasons in your environment. In addition to defining the applications, you will define the listeners. And listeners will be the IP addresses and or ports for the application. And then you specify how that particular listener binds to this application that you define. You can create many listeners, many applications, and bind them together the way you like. Now, how to make changes? The first and easy way to do that is, um, well, reload the server again. You probably won't, don't want to do that. Uh, you can define, uh, you can put that whole JSON payload as a put request into the control socket of uh, Nginx unit. Or you can make those changes one by one by accessing each of those objects and each of those strings separately by their own URLs. 
And uh, we are giving you this flexibility on how to make those changes. All right, here's, that's what you have now. And let's talk a bit about the plans for this project. Yesterday, we released Nginx unit in open source. It's available as a public beta. We encourage everybody to try and use it. And um, our first priority right now is to give you a track record of stable releases, stable code, and uh, we want you to be as confident in Nginx unit as you already are with Nginx. The new languages that we will be adding to uh, the unit are, uh, there, there is a big list, but the first pr uh, languages that we're going to be work on are Java and Node.js. Once we get more languages and more contributions uh, from the community on different languages, you will see that it's uh, really easy to extend Nginx unit for supporting the application language that you prefer. Next, we will be adding the functionality around HTTP2 and more features about HTTP functionality. And for this service mesh communication and service-to-service -service communication, we will add the proxy and features and the networking features directly in Nginx unit. Yesterday, we uploaded the code to GitHub and uh, released it publicly for everybody. We already see hundreds of comments in social media. We are on the top of uh, Hacker News uh, with this project. We got uh, hundreds of stars. Uh, we already have pull requests and issues created in this re GitHub repo. The response from the community is overwhelming, and it's been only 24 hours since the project release. Um, we encourage you to uh, go to GitHub uh, to uh, start going through uh, the code, to read it, to fork it, to contribute to it. We will be making this software together with you, and Nginx uh, unit core engineering team will work with you on the pull requests and GitHub issues. Now, let's see what other resources we prepared for you to um, start working on uh, Nginx unit. We uploaded the documentation at uh, unit.nginx.org, and the code is also available in our uh, standard Mercurial repository at uh, the unit repository. You can contribute to the code either uh, by using uh, the well-known process how you were contributing to the Nginx project already, or you can use the GitHub process. In addition to that, uh, 11 o'clock today in this room, uh, just after the break, we will have a deep dive session in Nginx uh, unit. In that deep dive session, we won't have any slides. We started working on a live demo of this uh, project, and uh, we found that this demo actually takes, uh, in order to show you all of the functionality to show how to work with it, it will take us the whole session to go through this. So be prepared to see a lot of uh, command line output and a lot of uh, new ways of running multiple PHP, Python, and Go applications in that same server. If you want uh, to work with us in a mailing list, the mailing list is unit at nginx.org. It's uh, already available, and you can subscribe to it either on the web or just send by sending an email to unit-subscribe at nginx.org. And what's even more amazing for our Nginx Plus commercial users is that they already have this amazing channel of communication to the technical people at Nginx, which is the Nginx support. And if you have questions on Nginx unit, you can ask those questions using that same support channel that you already know and like. Well, that's uh, what I have about Nginx unit today for you. So let's build this software together. Let's see how it uh, works out, and let's see how we can run the new applications uh, using Unit. Thank you.